This is KGW News at Noon. Hello and welcome to KGW News at Noon. I'm Christine Pitawanich. Just about 20 minutes ago, the Washington County deputy shot while serving an eviction notice was released from the hospital. Deputy Charles Doze was shot seven times and has been in the hospital since July 26th. Bullets hit his chest, arms and head. Jose's daughter told us last week he had his left eye and teeth removed and also had surgery on one of his arms, but said his recovery is going well despite everything. We had a KGW crew at the hospital today to witness the moment he was released. We'll have full coverage of the story on the news at four o'clock. And in an NBC exclusive interview, FBI investigators want anyone who believes they're a victim of this man on your screen, 29 year old Nagasi Zuberi, to come forward. He's accused of kidnapping a woman in Seattle and locking her in a cinder block cell in his garage. Zuberi was arrested in July after investigators say the woman escaped from his home in Klamath Falls and flagged down help. Police say they've linked him to four sexual assaults in at least four states. Zuberi lived in Vancouver from July of last year until March of this year. He also spent some time in Portland during that period before moving to Klamath Falls. NBC News got an exclusive update with an FBI investigator in Portland. She says victims in the case are worried they won't be believed, which can stop them from coming forward. Based off the information that we have, um, sex workers were part of uh, the population that he targeted, but also other roommates or other people he felt that didn't have connection to anybody else. They no longer need to be afraid. He is in custody and we are ready to listen to support their truth and their experience and give light to it so that they can rewrite their own ending. While he goes by the name Nagasi Zuberi, investigators say he's used to or he's used rather other names as well, including Sakima, Justin Haichi and Justin Kuasi. Now to Oregon City, where police have a grim task. They're looking for the body of a missing mother after investigators say the man she lived with confessed to killing her. KGW's Mike Benner has the story, but first, a quick warning. Some of the details are graphic. Appearing in Clackamas County Court via closed circuit TV from the jail, Jamin Fritch pleaded not guilty to murder and abuse of a corpse. These are charges connected to the disappearance and death of Kara Taylor, a case that troubles even the most seasoned investigators. This is a tragic situation. Captain David Edwins of the Oregon City Police Department says Taylor was last seen July 25th. Two days later, Fritch, who Taylor lived with at a home on Jefferson Street in Oregon City, reported her missing. Right away, detectives thought the disappearance was suspicious. Miss Taylor has a, a adult disabled daughter that was living at the location and for her to leave the daughter there by herself and not be seen or heard was what led us to believe that. Follow up investigation revealed that Fritch made multiple trips to a Home Depot for things like zip ties, tarps and a saw blade. Blood was found in the home Fritch shared with Taylor. And it was revealed in court that Fritch admitted to investigators he killed Taylor. But that's not all. He admitted that he dismembered her and placed parts of her body in different locations and said that the police would not be able to find her body because it was dispersed over multiple garbage municipalities. Prosecutors argued that Fritch is a danger to society and should remain behind bars without bail. The judge obliged. Just a little comfort for the grieving family of Kara Taylor. Obviously, our condolences go out to Ms. Taylor's family. Uh, it's a very tragic, tragic situation. And first and foremost, that's our condolences are for her family. I'm Mike Benner for KGW News. Kara Taylor's family released a statement thanking investigators for their hard work. Taylor leaves behind a 22 year old daughter with special needs. A shooting in Northeast Salem has neighbors feeling uneasy after two people were injured. One of them, a woman just out walking her dog. Here's Alma McCarty with what unfolded early Monday morning. In Salem, just after midnight, a nearby officer heard the sound of gunshots here around the area of Portland Road and Hyacinth Street Northeast. More police arrived soon after, blocking off the road for hours. All the police were over here by the circle and all about fire trucks and three ambulances and a whole bunch of policemen. Those officers found two victims, both with gunshot wounds, a 23-year-old man and a 47-year-old woman. 
Officers say she was just out walking her dog when she was hit by a bullet. Well, what I saw was a lady coming around here uh, screaming and hollering. Many who live here declined to speak with KGW, fearing for their safety. One neighbor agreed to interview with us only if his identity was hidden. He said the victim he saw was hit in the stomach. The lady came around here and got shot and then uh, she was over there by our car and uh, a whole bunch of people tried to save her life and tried to stop the bleeding. Salem police found that two people from what they call different groups got into a fight in the street when someone fired a gun. The crowd of people then left, some heading into one of the Summerwood apartments. That's where officers later served a search warrant and seized a short barrel rifle. They arrested two men in their 20s as well as a 14-year-old for charges unrelated to the shooting. Police haven't made clear whether anyone they arrested fired the shots. Alma McCarty, KGW News. Police tell us both of the people shot are expected to survive. They also confirmed the woman who was walking her dog was not involved in the initial fight. As for the 23-year-old, his involvement is under investigation. We'll, of course, update you as we learn more. City leaders are calling the growing number of traffic deaths in Portland a public health issue. They're higher than they've been in the last 30 years. This year, 44 people have died, 13 of them last month alone. At this time last year, Portland reported 39 traffic fatalities. Commissioner Mingus Maps, County Chair Jessica Vega-Peterson, and Ty Engstrom with Portland Police's newly restored traffic division shared their analysis yesterday. They say speed and impaired driving are the leading cause of traffic deaths. A shortage of police officers is another factor. So we're doing what we can with the resources we have. That afternoon shift coverage is only two sergeants, five motorcycle officers, and two car officers. That's all we could get. New officers are expected to join the traffic division once their probation period is over. It's not clear when that will happen, but within the next year, the Rose City will be installing four new traffic or 40 rather new traffic cameras. Well, this morning, TriMet unveiled its new headquarters. It's located in downtown Portland on Southwest Main, just blocks from City Hall. TriMet signed an 11 year lease for the 20 story building. When TriMet negotiated the lease back in 2021, it was the most lucrative agreement between a government agency and a private landlord in the state. TriMet's general manager and Department of Public Affairs, as well as other members of other departments, will work at that office. Okay, we're taking a quick step outside, looking out at the coast. Blue skies over there, beautiful weather. Let's get to Rod Hill with more of your weather. Christine, looks like a, a nice afternoon coming for us. Uh, low temperatures this morning after a couple of humid record low temperatures. And by that, I mean the last three mornings, we've actually set records for how warm the low temperatures were. This morning, we didn't do that. We cooled off. So I wanted to point that out. It was 52 in Hood River earlier this morning, one of the cooler spots. And I mean, Portland, Vancouver, we were still technically above normal at 63 each. It was 59 degrees down in Aurora. You folks in uh, Salem, 59 degrees was your low temperature. It was actually 40 on Burns. Look at that. Okay, well, a uh, big story for the remainder of today. Today, there's no rain chance, no storm chance, and everybody's basically seeing increasing sunshine. So here are the numbers for the remainder of today. We're in the 70s currently. I, I still think we could get up to about 86 for a high temperature at 4 p.m., mostly sunny skies at that time, and then about 80 at 8 p.m. Now, overnight tonight, clouds increase, and coming up, I'll talk about that rain chance that we still have in tomorrow's forecast. Okay, good stuff with the weather. Okay, check out these brand new photos from PDX. This is the new check-in and departure hall. It's taking shape. You can see tons of natural light and a wooden roof too. By the way, 95% of that 18 million pound wood roof is actually sourced from Oregon and Washington. The makeover also includes more trees and plants, gathering areas, plus a lot of new shops and local food stands. It's part of the five year, $2 billion investment known as PDX Next, with new sections opening in phases in 2024 and 2025.